Hi guys, my name is Jesus Lobon and this is my first video of parallel programming for noobs. This is the first of a series of video about parallel programming that I'll be doing in the next weeks. The main goal of this project is to try to understand some basic concepts of parallel programming, analyzing some basic applications and code. Assuming that you don't know anything about parallel programming at all, but you know how to code in C at least. <coughs> I hope everything will be clear in the next videos and any doubts just write a comment below and I'll try to help you. So let's start talking about why it's useful parallel programming at all, why we just don't keep programming in a sequential technique as we do until today. So why do we need parallel programming? Uh, first we need to talk about what are the common applications of parallel programming to see why are what are the advantages comparing to sequential programming. So let's talk about it. First we can see that simulation is a main topic uh, and probably the the most fun and important of parallel programming. Right? Uh, what are the advant advantages of simulations when we try to to apply parallel programming? That all simulations often often really need high performance computing. What is what is this? That we need uh, processors make m millions or billions of uh, floating point operations per second time, right? That a that a single processor couldn't couldn't do it. So what we do essentially is to uh, merge of these processors of the power of computing and use it of a big computing that that could help us to to make to to have a better performance uh, and these simulations but let's see why simulations are very powerful and very common uh, used in this in this new world of parallel programming so let, let's let's see uh, we know the classic scientific method uh, works as follows, right? Makes you make some research, uh, use some theory, and write a paper, perhaps, and then you need to experiment, right? But uh, this this has some limitations. Why? Because it's really expensive. Expensive in the way that you need, for example, if you're trying to test a car or just an airplane, you will need to build a, co a whole real one card and then for example make some crash simulation to see how uh, how good is the performance of your card or, or to, to do some benchmark when you try to sell it so this is really expensive to be to be destroying card at every time you want to test it right also that's very difficult it's very difficult in the way that we need to build for example we need to be build big and complicated labs for do some, some experiments. Uh, when we try to to test some medicines for humans uh, for a certain disease, when we we need to to first test it in animals and then in in humans, right? So this is also very slow process. And finally, that's very dangerous, of course example if you're trying to do some experiment with the weather or to test some nuclear weapons it's essentially must safe to use uh, simulations instead of of a real ones uh, so let's see some real applications that are currently in the in the world uh, in science we we have weather simulators right that also weather predictors can take can can tell us uh, how the weather will be in the next week or in the next month also in the next uh, 15 years for example for uh, research papers also earthquake simulations for engineering uh, when we try to build a house in a certain in a certain part of the world where probably there is more uh, probably of earthquake, like in Japan or Peru. Also, engine design will try to make some more powerful cars, uh, F1 race or something like that. Also, semiconductor designs for computers or or any other technology that we want. 
for business is really important and really save a lot lot of money when we do some financial and economic models uh, for markets for example we need to test how it will work if we do something in the next 10 or 20 years we can simulate the patterns of uh, of this new model of this new function and to check to check how this will work uh, also for defense for example in countries uh, cryptography are heavy heavy algorithms that could take years of years uh, in running time with a single processor that could that can exponentially reduce using parallel programming with thousands of processors working at the same time so that's it this is the first video of parallel programming for nodes in the next video we're going to see a little of MPI language well MPI is a library of C language so how would you like it and please subscribe like my video and thanks <laughs>